in Angelo, Texas, weighing 245 pounds, Cowboy Bob Ellis. His opponent from Algona, Iowa, weighing 240 pounds, Bob Geigel. The referee, Charles Benader. Well, George able to get at ringside. There's the bell. Cowboy Bob Ellis and Bob Geigel both exchange those hard rights. And immediately, Geigel climbs outside. He wants to get that wild pony a chance to calm down. You know, that's one thing I've got to say for the St. Louis Wrestling Club. They not only give you great matches at Keel, but also on championship wrestling. How about this one? A main event anywhere. The Harry Ape. And the pride of San Angelo, Texas, Cowboy Bob Ellis. Ellis working on the left wrist of Geigel. Can't be familiar and call them by their first names as they both have the first name of Bob. Ellis keeps twisting. Geigel sinks to his knees. Keeps up this twist and we'll have a pretzel. And Geigel simply belted him in the small of the back. And there's an out and out lie for you. But then I guess you wouldn't expect him to say anything else, claiming he used the flat of his hand. He reaches up with that right hand to grab Ellis's hair, and the referee was right there. He thought better of the idea. Geigel once more brought to his knees. You know, fans, it's almost impossible to realize, but you, do you know that this is the 10th anniversary for wrestling on Channel 11. Our first card took place in the Coruscant Room on May 23rd, 1959. And here we are in 1969, the 10th anniversary. Both men dishing out this bruising punishment. Geigel backs off to the other corner. Starts a running leap. Ellis gets out of the way. Follows it up with a belt to the back. Rights and lefts. Arm dragging the toss. Three minutes, three minutes to go. Well, they've wasted no time in this match. Somebody's been on the attack all the way. Geigel with that left foot over the lower rope. Now gets a good grip on both ears of Geigel. Still trying to set him up for that bulldogging headlock. A good flying tackle, but in the process, the cowboy himself seems to have been momentarily stunned, but guy goes on his feet, just barely, but at least he's vertical while the cowboy is still horizontal. And he was going to sit on him. Land the canvas and a try for a pin, a count of one. Oh, 
Back body drop. Count of one. And this time it's Ellis that's thrown off. Fans pleading with Ellis not to pay any attention to him. Wade right in, try to finish him off. In the waning moments of this match, hard right by the Cowboy. Good one by Geigel. And a dandy. One minute, one minute left. Well, you couldn't ask for a better one than this. Two of the outstanding men in the ring today there. The Cowboy with an abdominal stretch. Shades of Wilbur Snyder. Does he have him? Will Geigel be forced to submit? He's a tough old bird, though. Just calmly reached around, grabbed him by the trunks, upset him, and broke it up. Wild right by Bob Geigel. A beauty. And as the bell rings, Geigel falls forward on his knees. By the way, these two fellows were going on, and I imagine they could have gone on for an hour. And it's a draw. Fellas, trying to jump and get out there on that whistle. There's the bell. There's a little bit of a handshake before hostilities begin. You can watch for everything in the book in this fall. Each man is within a fall of winning. Each man is within a fall of losing. Look at that boy trying to set up that cyclone twist. <laughs> That's the old Cobra twist. Some of the fans around Chicago here are beginning to call it the cyclone twist. There's a single outside wrist lock on Thez. Doubled now. Let's see if he can tough it out. Shorter arms of Anaya hold him instead here. Headlock. Anaya almost didn't get that head scissors on. 20 minutes, 20. Who's twisting around here trying to upset the leverage that Anaya has? This would really be a Cinderella story of this boy and I. Ooh, look at that kick. Right square in the middle of the face. Kangaroo is perfectly legal. He is a little tangled up as to what part of North America he is in at the moment. As I started to say, just imagine what a Cinderella story it would make if this lad and I were to score an upset here tonight. I'll say this much, he's one of the most likely men I know of capable of scoring an upset. Headlock. Well, that'll have to be broken up. It was. Headlock again on Thez. He can't seem to stay away from this headlock of Anaya's. There's the rip. Oh, 
under the ropes with him. There's a flying toe hold. Brother says is really lashed up to that one. Look where he has his left leg for leverage, right in under his own knee. It'll be a hard one to break. Sometimes is known as a figure four to hold because of the similarity to the old classic figure four. Incidentally, uh, those of you in our audience who are real dyed and wool wrestling fans, if you'd like some wrestling news from the home of the champions here at International Amphitheater, if you'll just send your uh, name and address on a penny postcard to me, take care of this station, I'll send it to Russ Davis. I'll see that you get the wrestling news in the amphitheater. It won't cost you a thing. For those of now you're trying to set up that twist again. Oh, oh whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm. Mercy me how they hit that thing. Let's see where Fez has gone to. Yep, seen crawl into the ring there, and now he still is not in. Listen to the count. And he made it back in. Barely in the nick of time. Looked for a minute like Uncle Lou had had it, didn't it? Hey! Oh, you can just feel the tension here in the house tonight. Luthez is very much of a beloved champion. He's been a credit to the wrestling profession. There's a kangaroo from Anaya. There's another one. Ooh! How long can this go on? There's a drop kick. Fez is trying for a half crab. A crab or a reverse step over toe hole. Goes by three or four different names, but nonetheless, submission was given by Anaya. Pressure of it was just too much even for his ambitions to 